my car and I want to be the next circuit judge. I grew up in Tullahoma, I graduated from Tullahoma High School in 1981. My wife, Alicia, graduated up here, Coffee County, class of 90. Together we raised five children. I graduated from high school and went off to college. I went to the Citadel, the military college in South Carolina, on a Navy ROTC scholarship. It was at that school that I learned the concept of duty and I learned how to be a leader. I was accepted into the UT Law School and I was commissioned in the U.S. Navy Reserve. And after I graduated from law school, I learned active duty as a lieutenant in the US, United States Navy Judge Advocate General's Corps. So at the age of 25, I started trying jury trials. After several years in the Navy JAG Corps, I wandered around a little bit, but I moved back to Coffee County in 1996. And for the last 25 years, more or less, I've been a trial lawyer here. And I have come to love the citizens of this county. I've raised my children here. I watched my dad grow old and die here. My mother still lives here. My extended family is here. I have probably tried more jury trials than any attorney currently practicing in Coffee County. If you have any questions about my confidence, I urge you to ask any member of any courthouse staff in any courthouse here in Southern Middle Tennessee or in the federal courts down in Chattanooga. That's enough about my background. I have never represented a bank. I've never represented a real estate developer. I've never represented a corporation. I've never represented an insurance company. And other than in the service of my country, I have never represented the government. I've always represented your average citizen, just like you all. My approach to being a judge is protect the average citizen, and I will protect you all, and I will look out for you all. Thank you. Bobby Carter. Mr. Birch. Good evening. My name is Eric Birch, and I'm running for Circuit Court Judge here in Coffee County. Um, I am from Manchester, graduated Coffee County High School in 1991, uh, went off to Knoxville to UT, and I graduated law school there in 1998. Um, came back to my hometown to practice law, started my own law office in 2003. Um, my practice consists of family law cases, criminal defense, and general civil litigation. Um, I am board certified as a specialist in family law by the state of Tennessee. Um, one of only nine attorneys in the state that have achieved that distinction. Uh, I've authored a book called Divorce in Tennessee. Uh, it's designed to help divorce clients navigate the divorce process. Uh, I think it's important for uh, professionals to be involved with their community. And I have done that in my career. I have served on the board of directors of the Manchester YMCA. I have served on the direct board of directors for Partners for Healing, an organization that is dedicated to providing health care for working folks who aren't able to, to pay for health insurance. Served on the board of directors at Unity Medical Center. Proud that we have kept a hospital in Manchester despite the struggles that rural hospitals have undergone in recent years. Served on the board of directors of American City Bank. Uh, learned a lot about real estate and business transactions while I was serving on that board. I've been involved with the Sportsman and Businessman organization since 1998. Uh, served on the board of directors for Little League in Manchester. For the last 15 years, most of my free time has been involved in coaching my children's sports teams. I have three children, Augie, who is 20, Abigail, who is 18, and Samuel, who is 11. Over the years, I've coached 21 uh, sports teams, uh, youth sports teams, um, ranging from soccer to baseball to basketball. If you name it, chances are I've coached it. Those have been some of the best times of my life. I wish I could do it all over again. Um, if you elect me as your circuit court judge, I will serve with honesty and integrity. I'm not perfect, but I think if you ask people that know me, they will tell you that I do what I say I'm going to do, that I try to treat others with respect and treat others the way I would like to be treated, and I am honest. Uh, I have run multiple businesses, some successful, some not so successful. 
Um, but even though I've been involved in business, I have never been sued. I have never been uh, declared bankruptcy. I have never been uh, disciplined by the Board of Professional Responsibility. Except for the time when I was 20 when I got caught drinking a beer and Judge Letzinger here was nice enough to prosecute me. Um, he gave me some community service and um, probably did me some good. Uh, I had never been arrested but for that. I uh, thank you for your consideration and look forward to answering your question. Well, you're going to get to do that right now. We're coming right back to you right. and we're going to give you the first question of the night. What is the biggest challenge you've had to overcome in your legal career to be here today asking election as circuit court judge? And how will overcoming that challenge make you a better judge? I think my biggest challenge as an attorney is they really don't teach you anything about practicing law. <laughs> um, they teach you how to think like a lawyer, but as far as the practical ins and outs of everything, you don't know anything when you're coming out. Um, how I've overcome that is just by working hard. I, I have consistently worked 50, 60 hours a week raising a young family. Um, basically, when you practice law like Bobby and I do, uh, you're digging it basically out of the dirt. We don't represent insurance companies. We don't represent banks, by and large. We don't represent governmental entities. Um, you have to, people have to come to you and they expect you to work hard. And, and Bobby and I have done that over the course of our careers. And we've both been successful and overcome a lot of challenges in our careers. And that's basically what, how I would answer that question. All right. Uh, do you want me to re-ask the question, or? Plus, y'all know me in here 15 years ago. I was in a car wreck, and I broke my neck. Wasn't a bad break, but it was painful. My very good doctor, who knew a lot about drugs, but didn't know a lot about genetics, prescribed me 120 oxy-30s. So after about four months, I was, I was a victim of big pharma. I became a drug addict. It's not, hard for me, it's not easy for me to say, but here I am. I made every bad decision a lawyer and an addict. Y'all know I'm there in y'all's family could make. And I just about ruined my career. I just about ruined my life. But through all of those bad decisions and through all of that nightmare, God saved me. God had a plan for me. And as I get into this race, I see what that plan was. I recovered. And I spent the last 15 years trying to restore my reputation, restore my family. I found my faith. I am, particularly, I am particularly interested in leading our drug courts, our recovery courts, and our veterans courts. Folks, that is the pandemic that is facing us. Y'all know it. Y'all have family members. You know people that have become victims of this. I, I, I feel like I've been called to use what has happened to me and what I have learned in order to try to help the people that I love, which are the people in this community. I hope people can see that I'm really honest about this. Thank you all. All right, and we're coming right back to you with the uh, next question. Uh, what will you do using your position as circuit judge to help make your community a better place to live? In 30 years, I've been in front of state judges. I've been in front of federal judges. I've been in front of court martial judges. I've been in front of general session judges. I've been in front of juvenile judges. The best judges that I've been in front of had a sense of humanity about them. They could look at a person and they could figure out what that person was about and what they needed when that person couldn't. I feel like that I could use those skills to help people to be better citizens. You, we, had, we had a really good judge here when I first started practicing. I was scared of him, but his name was Judge Gerald Ewell. And the two things I liked about him were he never played favorites, and he was consistent. I feel like consistent application of the law and not playing favorites will make the court system better, it'll make it predictable, and it'll make it uniform. You know, America is a great country because it has a stable legal system that the public has faith in. Me shoring up faith in the legal system and being a leader, that's how I'm going to make my community better. Thank you all. 
want me to re-ask or? No, I, okay. I think I have it. Okay. Um, the way I would make Coffee County a better place to live through being a circuit court judge, I have a plan, uh, actually Judge Lockhart and I, Judge Lockhart has been my partner for the past six years. I uh, can't say what good, enough good enough things about Will as a person and now as a judge. He is doing a phenomenal job. I get told, I've been told um, dozens of times by attorneys what a great job Will is doing as a judge. Um, Will's practice was primarily uh, criminal based. Uh, probably 80% of Judge Lockhart's practice was, uh, was criminal. Minus the direct opposite of that, I, I do more, our roles in the office where I did more of the divorces and other civil litigation as opposed to Will. Um, so our plan is for Will to handle the criminal docket and myself to handle the civil and family law docket. And that will save, I figure it will save the citizens of Coffee County through time saving and efficiency. I believe that it will save Coffee County a lot of money moving cases forward and it will save clients money and things take too long and that's not the fault of the judges that we have right now. Coffee County is exploding in its population. Um, things are just different. All right, thank you very much. Uh, next question is coming right back to you. How important is political party in local races, such as the one for judge? And what prompted you to seek the bench as a Republican? In my opinion, political parties should not even be an issue in local elections. Um, I, I don't feel like, I don't look, I'm not going to look at litigants who come before me as whether they're a Republican or a Democrat, your job as a judge is really to be apolitical, okay? Um, you should start out on a fair, even basis. Um, what made me choose to be a Republican? Uh, I, I believe in what the Republican Party has to offer. Um, the Democratic Party has swung way too left, and I feel like they are not in step with the values of Coffee County. So I, even though I think all of these local races should be nonpartisan, you know, you've got to, you've got to pick a horse and run, and that is what I, what I chose to do, and I'm not sorry I did. I was looking through my dad's jewelry box a couple of days ago. You know, men of a certain age, they, they had a jewelry box where they had cufflinks and he had his A-row pocket protector, uh, but he had, a, uh, he had a button that said all the way with Adelaide. That was the family I was from. He voted for Adelaide Stevenson as a Democrat back in the 50s. My mother met Jack Kennedy. She said, son, when, you, when you're a 25-year-old girl and you meet Jack Kennedy, you tend to vote Democrat for his wife. Okay? <laughs> that was my, that creeped me out, but, but that, was the, uh, that was the political background that I came from. 1984, I voted in the first presidential election. I was a cadet at the Citadel. I was a junior, and I was getting ready to go into the armed forces, and uh, the choice to me was clear. Ronald Reagan. That was the first president I ever voted for. Now, have I always voted for a Republican? I can't say that I have. But it's always been the, the system of values of the Republican Party is the party that I've always identified with. I'm an armed forces veteran, go Navy. Uh, John McCain got picked on, but he was a good Republican. I'm not going to identify with anybody whether they're a Democrat or a Republican, but I do think at this point in time, the Republican Party is definitely the party that reflects the values of rural Tennesseans. And that is my part. Thank you. All right, and we're coming right back to you. What fundamental change, if any, will you make if elected as circuit court judge? One of the things that I think we need in this county is we need some kind of mentoring program. Young people that grow up here, you either have kids that are hot runners and they're, they're going to go off to college and they're going to conquer the world, 
or they don't know what they're going to do. I think I would like to start a mentoring program for younger people that have an interest in the judicial system. I know uh, Mr. Big Jim Henry, I don't know if you guys remember him, but he had a legal post, a Boy Scout post, and it was a legal post, and that's what first got me started in the law. Now that doesn't directly and fundamentally, that doesn't directly and fundamentally change the court system, but over time we might be able to attract some good talent to come back here because folks there aren't any good there are some but we have a we have a dark of legal talent in, in younger uh, younger attorneys and, and I think I'd try to do something to attract younger talent to come back here to shore up our legal system. You, you can ask anybody. Uh, there aren't enough attorneys to take appointments. We need to fix that. Thank you all. I agree with Mr. Carter. We don't have enough lawyers and probably really dumb of us to to get out of the law profession right now, Bobby. Uh, actually, but I um, just building on the plan that I was discussing earlier, um, and, and building on what Bobby said, you know, it is hard. Cases are taking too long in Coffee County right now. And again, it's not the fault of any of the judges. Coffee County is just a different place right now. It is exploding. We've got 50% more people than we had when I started practicing law in 1998. And we've got probably half the lawyers. Um, and things are moving too slow and, and we need to speed those up. There's no reason why you shouldn't be able to finish a criminal case in more in less than, you should be able to finish it in six months. Same thing with a divorce. If you if you separate each judge has their own docket and they've got Will will handle the civil as or the criminal aspect and I would have to handle the civil and divorce. There's only so many days in a year. If each judge is handling all of all kinds of cases, you've got to devote days to each kind of case. And it, it just doesn't work well. It doesn't work the way what it would uh, with our plan. Thank you. All right, last question. Why should voters vote for you rather than your opponent? I, I just think I have a plan. Uh, it, it, I think it can save Coffee County a lot of money doing it this way. We have people in the jail and, and Judge Lockhart will do an outstanding job of, of handling the criminal docket if I'm lucky enough to win, okay? He, he is doing just fantastic. Uh, he will move those cases along. He is the only person running for judge that has actually presided over a criminal trial. Uh, he is ready. He's ready to take that docket and run with it. Um, I... My background's in divorce. I'm a, I'm a divorce family law specialist. Um, there's the delays. If, you, if a judge only holds domestic relations court two or three days a month, busy lawyers are, are, have busy calendars, okay? If you've got a situation where you've got a, a, a mother who is hiding the child and cutting the dad off from any visitation and it takes you three months to get in court, that's too long. I would offer one day every single week to hear temporary motions so it doesn't get, you, you've got access to courts within a week. Right now it takes sometimes two, three, four months before you can handle those. Thank you. All right. This one judge handling uh, the criminal docs is practical. We've got one judge handling criminal dockets right now. You can ask anybody over in the courthouse, and I, I encourage you to. You're not going to get a case to a jury. You're not going to get a res resolution of a criminal case in less than a year. And that's right now. That's with one judge. That's with his plan right now. Both judges need to handle criminal cases. We've got COVID. Sir, we've got all these COVID cases that are blacklogged. There are people that have been in jail over there for years waiting on their trials. That's just impractical. Why should you elect me? 30 years of good experiences and 30 years of bad experiences. They have a saying in the Navy that calm seas don't make good sailors. 
Well, folks, I've been through a couple of storms. And I've weathered those storms, and I feel like there was a purpose to that. And I think that purpose... I was raised Presbyterian, so I believe in predestination, and I believe in purpose. But I feel like that purpose is to, for me to be elected and to get up there, and particularly to lead those drug and veterans courts and preside over civil and criminal cases and to do it with fairness, not play favorites. The guy that owns the corporation gets treated the same as the guy that sweeps the floor in the corporation. This is important. This is more important. Thank you. And this is the point where would you like to ask your opponent a question? <laughs> I'm asking the citizens of this jurisdiction to evaluate me on my record, mistakes, non-mistakes, good and bad. My opponent is a fine trial lawyer, hard worker. I don't have any questions for him. I want y'all to look at me. Thank y'all. <laughs> uh, you have a question for your opponent? I, I don't have any questions for Mr. Carter. Uh, Mr. Carter is a fine, very good criminal lawyer. Uh, I have had occasions in my career that um, I had a difficult case and I asked Bobby to help me with um, He, Because he was the best lawyer for the job. Bobby is one heck of a criminal lawyer. Um, people come to me for criminal defense because they can't afford Bobby. <laughs> um, you know, he's operated his own business for 10 years. He, he's, he's a very capable lawyer. So I take it you don't want to ask the question. <laughs> <laughs> well, now is your time. This is your closing statement. You have two minutes, so go, go right ahead. I, I, I do take issue with something uh, Mr. Carr said um, about the veterans' courts and drugs' courts. Uh, you know, there's only, currently there's only six people in that system, uh, and a judge just doesn't get to create or, or dictate how that system is run, okay? It's a very small part of uh, the number of criminal cases that we deal with every day, and I, I, I think both of those are worthy, but it's, it's really a very, very small part of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. And it, it's not, respectfully, it's not up to Mr. Carter whether for him to just take over veterans court and take over drug court. Judge Greg Perry, who I cannot say enough good things about what the job he is doing, um, is already running drug court and he is proud of running drug court. He's been involved with drug court since its inception. I don't think Judge Perry is going to give up drug court. Uh, Judge Lockhart is running veteran court, veterans court. He's doing a great job of that. Uh, I don't see Judge Lockhart giving that up. It's not just up to, the, to whoever wins this election just to go take over these specialty courts. Um, Again, I, I think our plan will reduce the time. I disagree with Mr. Carter that one judge can't try, can't handle the criminal docket. If that's all the judge was doing and that's what the judge was good at, I disagree that that judge, I, in fact, I know Judge Lockhart can do it. He's going to do it. Judge Jackson is stepping down in, in June and he's going to do everything. He's a hard worker. I've been around him for... 10 years now, uh, he's, he's, he's capable of handling the docket and moving along quicker. Thank you. Your final statement. 30 years is a long time to do this. And I've learned a thing or two in it. And the one thing I've learned is, as I say, it's all about efficiency, but it's really about people. Like a single mom trying to get child support for a kid, protect a family from a from a harassing neighbor, uh, protect families from crime victims, protect a spouse from an abusive spouse, uh, protect a homeowner from a from a predatory lender or a or, or a, a, a development company that's trying to jack them around. Those those are the kind of people 
that go in front of the circuit court judge. And those are the kind of people that need the skills and the protection and the humanity, quite frankly, that that I feel like I had to offer. Y'all remember Judge John Rollins? Uh, he, he was circuit judge here. He died about 10 years ago. What always impressed me about him was he could always see the humanity in people, and I, I tried to model myself after that. I, I, I want to be the kind of guy, I want to be a leader, and, and I feel like I've been bred to be a leader. I was a Navy officer. Um, I want to be a confidant. If people have problems, I want them to be able to come to me and not, it, it not be used against them, it not be told to somebody else. And I want to be a mentor of people. So that's why I'm doing it, and I humbly ask y'all to consider me on, on May 3rd. Thank y'all. Thank you, Mr. Carter. Thank you, Mr. Birch. Let's all give him a big hand. We are going to take a slight break, but don't go too far. Lucky's coming back to the chair. We're going to move on. And, uh, and we'll